If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode, are you ready? Of Mind Pump. We went off pump. on some awesome topics uh, in this episode. We started out, you know, we had a little fun. We talked about fashion faux pas. Mm-hmm. You'll never believe who had a fashion faux pas in the studio today. <laughs> the self-proclaimed wizard of fashion. That's right. Uh, we talked about the evolution of film, music, YouTube, and the future for creators. We talked about the importance of having a purpose in business and in fitness and health and in life. You have to have a purpose that drives you. Otherwise, uh, you have no direction. Get that meaning. We also talked about starting from where you are at. Now we talked to personal trainers and clients in that part of this episode. In other words, where you're at, you got to start right there in order to move forward. You can't think 15 steps ahead. We talked about the value of tracking and becoming aware of the signs your body's giving you. We gave some six-week contest updates, find out who's in the lead for the fittest body at Mind Pump or the biggest change at Mind Pump, which will be ending in about five weeks. Uh, Adam and Justin are fighting furiously for second place. It's going to be really good, <laughs> really good contest. <laughs> I ain't fighting nothing. Then we talked about my uh, workout experiment. This is something I've been talking about or thinking about for a long time. I'm, Sal it's a, goes back to the lab. Self-experimentation that I'll be doing I'm on excited for Saturday. This. It's going to be kind of cool. Uh, also, I do want to mention MAPS performance is half off. That's 50%. Finally, off. people. You know, it's crazy. Since I, we- I would say, okay, I would say that this program is the program that is probably the most underrated that we have because it's the one that most people need and probably wouldn't do on their own. Mm. Like, even myself, like, if I like look at like all the programs that we've written, like, which ones do I like to train to? Which ones do I normally go to? And which ones should I be doing more of? 100% Map Screen is that program because of the movements that are in there. It's just, it's a lot of unconventional type of training that most of us just don't do on a regular yeah. basis. That it's going to just- benefit the quality of your life. And, and in this program, I mean, you have the most amount of of exercises and videos out of all the programs. I mean, this is teaching you like a whole new skill set that uh, a lot of people tend to neglect. I mean, they tend to move their body just in the sagittal plane, like forwards and back. And this this is going to challenge a lot of people that, uh, you know, are in their comfort zone. So it's something that we've always sort of recommended and tried to get people to um, really, really, like go through it, like challenge your body in a new way. It's it, it is definitely one of the most comprehensive. It's why it's also one of the most expensive programs we have. Right. But we've cut the price in half, so it's like seventy bucks or something like that, seventy something dollars, and you get full access to Maps Performance uh, to train your body for full spectrum athletic performance. But you have to use the following code to get the fifty percent off. Green fifty. That's the word green and the number fifty. All one word at checkout. Do this at mindpumpmedia.com. You can also find our bundles there. This is where we take multiple MAPS programs and put them together uh, for specific goals, uh, like our super bundle, which is designed for somebody who wants the next year of fitness planned out for them. You find all of those, including the 50% off MAPS performance. Remember to use the code GREEN50, that's the word green and the number 50, at mindpumpmedia.com. What's up with your socks? Uh, I'm Those not, are great. They are. I'm not. Uh, I'm not really. It looks coordinated. like you finished. I'm not coordinated. There. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. yeah. They look like finish line. Like you ran and then you finished. And then your your feet did. You should yeah. know, Justin, what those are from where. Oh, you're, yeah, of course. Vans. The vans. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. man. But I, the, I, this Old is school. this is inappropriate right now. So this is not this is not fair to judge me because I'm packing. Everybody gets a one week pass when you're moving for their uh, clothes. <laughs> yes, one week pass when you're moving. That's it. That's all I asked for. Really? Because <laughs> yeah, you can't wear Van socks with Adidas shoes. Ooh, oh, off. yeah. And the only reason why you know, Sal knows- I mean, you, you can. Sal knows that because I'm sitting with my legs crossed and my, my, my pants- Your pants just, are just riding up. Uh, yeah, they hiked up. I mean, here's the deal. You can, but if you're the kind of person that cares about silly things, then you don't. You know silly what I mean? things. You wanted them to match. <laughs> like, you want the same brand. Yeah, no. You know it's, what I mean? Yeah, it's Like, not, you, know, law, you know, rules that we make for that ourselves. Is that is interesting, though. You see some people with, like, gym gear, and then they'll have, like, Nike with, like, Reebok shorts, and this, and it's like, ooh, 
I don't know. There's something about it. It just doesn't work. Well, man. certain brands you can cross. You just yeah. can't. You know, when it's a, when it's a, a direct, it'd be like somebody, you know, wearing a mind pump hat with a barbell shrug t-shirt. Just doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what's yeah, wrong with you? Weird. <laughs> yeah, just, Make up your mind. Yeah. <laughs> That's conflicted. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, you can't. Nah. All right, Nike and Reebok. Yes. Poke, they're, poke. They're, they're, too, they're too similar to, to do that. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. have to be, it, it, you could do like, um, you could wear like a brand, like a, let's say like a, a van. Well, so here's the thing: like, if they have competing ideologies, then that makes sense. Like, right, right, like, okay. But if they're just two brands of fashion, unless one represents, like, one is like an extreme. Like, let's say one is like a left ideology and one is a right wing ideology. Then yeah, that wouldn't make well, any it, sense. It kind of is like that. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so Vans is a skate and surf brand. Right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Lifestyle. And, and Adidas is like a sport, athletic, soccer, basketball. So, so how are those conflicting ideologies? Because Break it down for me. Because you, if you're a if you're a soccer basketball player, you're typically not a yeah. skater, really? surf and skate guy, right? Justin, you, did you ever skateboard? Yeah, I did. Did you play basketball and soccer? Yeah, but like. I'm, wow. I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a skateboarder, right? So like, I was always conflicted with like buying too much stuff that like represented skate. Surf. That's what I mean. It's so, like poser. It, so my va- my Vans when I wear when I wear my Vans, it goes with like my Dickies types of of shorts when I wear those, or my shorts that are styled like a Dickies. Like so, when did mm. Dickies become skater? By the way, it's been like that for a while. But before that, wasn't Dickies? It's like work. Clothes. It was either you were either a construction worker yeah. or you were a cholo. Well, my theory. Yeah. Those yeah. are the two. My uh-huh. theory on that is the the skateboarders is because Dickies ma- the material is so hardy you yeah. could crash on asphalt. Yep. And it's not getting tore up. Oh yeah, because because jeans and all that, we'd shred through jeans. Yeah, because like, you hit no, the those, that, that material is yeah. like it's like. So I have a different theory because when I was in high school, skate skating and the style really got really popular, and my good friend became a skater, and I noticed this crossover style between like the cholo style and skateboarder skater it was style. Very similar. It was similar, but it was also kind of this crossover. And then, uh, what's his name? Jesse James. Remember the dude that was on, yes. uh, what was that Monster show called? Monster Garage. Yeah, he kind of dressed that way. Yeah. And I started to realize that, you know, sk- the skater style is from California. It's from Southern California. It's, like it's also Beach. from, yeah. yeah, and it's also from Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. And I think the skater culture just was intertwined with the kind of cholo culture. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's why I think you got the crossover because the styles were very similar. Like Jesse James with the Dickies and the Cortez shoes and the, and the you know what I mean? The button up uh, flannel. All the way up to he the- He actually would just do yeah, all the way up. Like all the way the, up. The top one. The only I difference is the they, wouldn't, they wouldn't open the bottom, See, right? Yeah, that was the difference. I had to make sure I, I always had the top one open. Yeah, and I always felt like in high school there was this alliance because I went the school high school I went to, we definitely had clicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I'm told there are not that many clicks today. In high no, school. no, that's what Enzo was saying. Yeah. So I'll, but I'll, I'll wear all of it, right? So I'll rock it. That's a, that's the one I love going in and out of everything. Like you can't, just like we talk about in fitness, like I've been this way since I was a kid. Like you can't put me in a box. Like you're not going to categorize me as a skater, as just an athlete, as whatever. Like I'll wear. You go from box to box. Well, well, yeah. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll wear. All, all the, inside all boxes. I'll wear all the different styles, but you don't mix the styles. Like what I'm doing right now yeah. is completely a, a what do they call a fashion faux, faux pas? pas? Yeah. yeah. Like that's a fashion faux pas. You just don't wear Adidas yeah. socks with a pair See, of... Or somebody like creates the look, right? Yes. And then that's like everybody's like, okay, they, we're all going to do like a variant of this kind of look. See, right. my approach is more like, remember the Matrix when Neo was like in that place and they were looking at like... The, uh, the the oracle was looking at all these gifted people. Yeah. And there was that kid, the bald kid, that was like bending the spoon with his mind. Yeah. And he's like, the key to bending the spoon is to realize there is, no, there is spoon. no spoon. I've realized there's no box. So I don't even jump. There's no box for me. <laughs> I don't jump anywhere because there is no box. I just wear the you fuck I want. You just put on what's in front of you. You guys literally have yeah. no idea. I am We've influenced this a close. Bit, I'm this close. All we need, Mind Pump just needs a little bit more success. I'm this close to literally wearing the same thing every day. You're going to go full the Steve same Jobs. I think it's a good idea. Every day. Because I think you're fashionably retarded. Yeah, I think it's a good idea for stay with oh, yeah, one thing. fashionably retarded. That's, that's not how you use <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you are. Yeah. So I think I actually think it would be a good idea to do like the just uniform yeah. Yeah. black. No, my fashion. I mean, you, you look good right now. You yeah. look great right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I, you know, I just look good. 
You yeah, know what I mean? you get your really matter. split shirt. Just kidding. Yeah. But I think uh, I th- what I care enough to I don't want to present myself to people so that they judge me right away. So I'm not gonna I'm not at, I'm never gonna be at the point where I don't care so much that I'm just like literally thinking to myself like it's hot outside I'll just be naked. Like I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. But you know I'm I'm, I'm so close to the point where where my closet is gonna be filled with two outfits, the one I wear every day. And the one I wear when I need to Listen, look a particular the way, way. The way you clothe yourself is just another way to express yourself. So it's an expression of yourself. And you're expressing, you don't give a fuck. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like that's And that you'll wear the same. There, I went through a phase where I wore blue jeans and a white fucking V-neck t-shirt for every day of the, yep. for a year, bro. Did you really? Yeah. I, I did that except for, it was was crew neck. But yeah. Yeah. Same yeah thing. That's, I did the same. What's so, a crew neck versus a V-neck? Just, just like it think sounds. about it. Yeah, I, think, I was gonna say yeah. just like well, it I sounds. I don't know what a crew neck yeah. is. You're wearing, you're, you're wearing, wearing a crew neck. neck. You're yeah. wearing a crew oh, neck. a normal collar. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. that's you know. So you can. And Did I, you think you were from the fifties? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I have like two looks, dude. It's like like fifties driven kind of rockabilly style, and then it's like your Jesse James kind of you know flannel and mountain cholo. I guess is what <laughs> yeah, I coined. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of a mountain the cholo. The mountain cholo look looks tough though. Oh, it's it is what it is. I just liked it, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with this. Is that a thing from where you grew up? Mm-hmm. How, is that a, little, really? a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, I I kind of I was influenced a lot by grunge and and going to all these concerts and stuff, and I just kind of had always liked that 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 culture. So mm-hmm. that's just I I always just like to keep that. Yeah, dude. Know. Speaking of grunge, because we were listening to so much of that music on the way up uh, when we were driving the other day. I've been putting on Stone Temple Pilots and mm-hmm. just just loving it, man. Forgot all about that music. Literally my favorite era of music. And it's, you know, everybody has that, I, I think. And really? That's your favorite I, era? Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm, with, I'm with Justin on that, too. Yeah. yeah really? All, everything. Yeah. Like, Alternative rock. That, 311. That. Yeah. All the, all the stuff in that era. Yeah. Like all the rap, everything. Wow. That, that's where I got stuck. So when I was, uh, I want to say when I was 13 or 14 is when I discovered, when I really discovered classic rock. And that still, I think, is my, my favorite era. Really. Just that, the like, like that. Like 70s. 60s, to, 70s, yeah. you know, kind of classic rock era. The, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, that's The Who. The, that's the purest in you. You know what I'm saying? I can appreciate that. I mean, there's a lot of everything that we listen to now came from that. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. like, so that's. There's an argument there when because nobody can talk shit about that music. Yeah. I, but I do. You see, can talk shit all day you want about the music it's today. Time tested already. Exactly, right? it is. It's time tested. People still listen to yeah. it today. Much of the music, even the shitty music you hear today, is is you know distilled from that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah, yeah. somebody took was inspired by. Or it, I yeah. should say inspired, not distilled. Is inspired from that, mm-hmm. right? So I, I you can't really talk shit about bands like that. I just, you know, there's there's still good music out today. Yeah. It's just yeah, a little bit, there is. it takes a little more effort. Yeah, I think, you have to really I think what happens it. when we get to our age and what a lot of people our age, and this isn't everybody because I, I have friends that are my age that are still heavily into music and, and stuff. It's just, it takes a large portion of your time to do that. I, and getting back into it like I have recently, remember I told you when I fell off the whole the, with my hormones and everything and I was like all fucking depressed and just mm-hmm. felt terrible and my workouts I'm injured it's like so it, it it forced me to gravitate to other things that provided a lot of joy and entertainment in my life and music was one of those things so recently in just the last like year or two I've really got back into listening to but what I realized is to keep it up it takes work mm-hmm. you know you got to be reading the late, latest and greatest uh, well the it, market is so big now and it was big then too but back then you, you listened to what was on the radio I mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. you know it wasn't like you were and you it was hard to find all these obscure bands it was less there was a uh, the market was different was was different it was more difficult to enter whereas today there's a lot of these artists now that you know people are showing me that I'm like they're big on YouTube, yeah. you know what I mean? Or they're, they're like you never would hear them anywhere on the yeah. radio or whatever. Which that's I think that's the counter to that, right? You say that it's it's so much bigger, it's it's a lot more, but it's also easier to access a lot of artists and find yeah and you know find your your niche or whatever you I like. I think I think you are right about the purest thing because for me a lot of the appeal of the music of the '70s is when you when you watch videos of these artists performing. You can tell very little effort was put into like they, like it was the music was what got them where they were. It wasn't because they were handsome mm-hmm. or pretty or because they looked good while they were performing. Many of these people look like they lost their minds while they were yeah. performing, or like, they're engineering it to get mass appeal, right? Like like it, a formula. Like, like yeah, they're following this formula that they've actually figured that out like very 
very specifically. So they it's have. Like, yeah, they you have. hear it in the music. And any any market that becomes massive, you can always trace it to these kind of pure roots. And, and fitness is really no different. Fitness is definitely no, no different. No, the book, the book Hitmakers talks all about this. I mean, it's a it's a great, great read along these lines because every they and they say that there's something in us that wants that. Mm-hmm. We are we gravitate to things that are familiar, familiar to sure. us. Yeah. So even music that you like today ha- will probably have hints of things that you that you liked when you were twenty well, years styles ago. Like that Same too. thing with movies, mm-hmm. movies that you enjoy and stuff like that will remind you of other things. Even if it's completely different, a movie, the Mm storyline or something around it is familiar to you. Yeah, and that's the the worry I have, I guess, is um, we're getting a little bit less innovative, I feel, like in terms of like like movies or music where, you know, I I know that like it'll probably swing back where people really want to be challenged again, you know, and like see something they've never seen before. You know, like we're like these... These studios, they're only going to invest in in something that they've already like through all these like complex algorithms. Everything mm-hmm. they know specific. I'm going to make yeah. you know this much profit because this formula attracts this amount of well, crowd on Facebook. <laughs> I, you know, I know they're into this type of a like you see this with Netflix like recruiting specific actors and all this kind of stuff. It's a formula. Yeah. Well, give it a chance though. Here, here's what I and hear me out. So what happened with this like entertainment is. It started off where, you know, it was very innovative, very creative. Uh, it was new. People are figuring new things out. Writers were pitching ideas. Studios many times would take on some of these ideas, which today, and what ended up happening is it becomes such a big market that in order to produce a movie, it would cost you $100 million at least. Mm-hmm. And so studios are like, look, we can't bet on this idea mm-hmm. Because we have this, you know, this guaranteed formula that we know is going to at least get us back our money and then some. Mm-hmm. Whereas your idea is a huge risk; it could be huge, it could also fail. So we started losing some of that. But then the internet now has stepped in, yeah. And now you're starting to see more creativity again with smaller studios, independent, you know, uh, no, that's creators. That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point, especially with like Sundance Film and like things where it's. People are there's other venues for them to present it to see if it is you know a hit or not. So it's like there's proving grounds on small scales. I think that like mass appeal wise, we just haven't seen some of those emerge to that. It's yet. starting to happen though because for a long time there, like let's look at our world, right? Like, so we podcast. So we're, I guess comparison would be a radio show, talk radio show. For a while there, talk radio shows all sounded the same, hey, different themes and stuff, but it was a kind of a similar formula similar person on the other on the other end of the mic and a sim you know hey welcome to the whatever you know and they're talking a particular way and it was very similar because it was a formula that kind of worked for general and so there was very little experimentation there was some you know people that would kind of break through but it wasn't a lot now with podcasting you have a huge variety yeah. of all kinds of different genres and conversations and that's happening with film so we're not going to see these mass pro- like these massively expensive well-produced movies, but what we are going to see are these creative kind of independent type films or whatever. There's some creative people on YouTube right now. If you go on YouTube and watch some of the stuff- It is true, yeah. You know, it's kind of cool. And then they're becoming the big studios, right? YouTube, Netflix. Well, you're already seeing them really start to up their production value too, which like the a lot of the acting really isn't there yet, but once they start bringing in actors into YouTube, I think that's going to be a, a def, definitely a definitive change, you know, going well, forward. Well, we already see what's the the leveling up of production on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, dude. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I'm so glad that, you know, we had the foresight and we had somebody as talented as Doug when we first started. Taylor, we, Taylor and I met this morning and the whole conversation was around YouTube. And this is one of the, com- what we were talking about. He's like, you know, the, the standard to get in now, like, you know, you have a lot of people that are aspiring to do something similar mm-hmm. to what we've done as far as having a fitness business and getting on a podcast or a YouTube and monetizing it that way and getting your programs and information out there. But the problem is now, I mean, just in the short time that we've been doing it, you know, you, what you can get away with just three years ago versus now, like the, oh, the standards bar has are, been higher. Right. It was, you know, raised. it's it's starting to look more like television. People are, because there are enough companies, enough people that are in the space that are providing now good information, you know, and, and, they, and it looks good. It sounds good. You know, I was just razzing, before we got on, I was razzing our boy Lane, you know, and I'm like... Lane has such good information. He fu- his sound sounds shitty. Like, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro, I love you. Fix your fucking sound. I don't think dude. he cares. I he, obviously, yeah, yeah. obviously, 
You know what I'm saying? Like it mm-hmm. sounds it sounds like they're in a goddamn bathroom every time mm-hmm. he does a video and it's like well, yeah, I don't think I, I don't people think, realize how they much don't. that hurts That's them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They don't you don't like the reason why he's so successful is because the guy puts out great infra, great content. He's which, also been doing it for a while. He did it when that was the that was the quality. Right, when he like, first started doing that, that was the quality. That's what you saw. Just stayed there. Yeah, I mean, back then YouTube was like, who dominated fitness on YouTube? That guy Scooby, whatever his name was, <laughs> uh, you know, six pack abs, what, Mike Chen or whatever, yeah, Mike Chen, which yeah. was literally a camera in your living Bro. room. Yeah, just talk. And there's a certain appeal to it, um, and I get that. that. That's that amateur appeal, which still exists. But there's also a quality the bar has been raised it's and it's continuing to raise i i tell you what if you don't get in the as an independent as an independent individual without lots of backing if you don't get into the space now 5 years from now i don't know how you're going to do it i don't know how it's going to be you're going to have to have a lot of money well, you'll have or to, a lot of production you'll have or, to you'll have to you'll, your business plan will have to be far more creative than i'm just going to do what the other guy is doing like you know, which is again part of the recipe with Mind Pump wasn't just oh let's just a bunch of fitness guys put some fitness information out out, out there is that we had a message that was different than a lot of people mm-hmm. and that you you caught you add that in with the production value that Doug brings to the table and it's a recipe for success and it's the reason why we've been on this you know climb since we've started and we'll continue to is because that that's what really separated us now if you come in. If you come in now or in three years from now, you'll not only have to be on par with the content that you're providing. You'll not only have to have great editing and video, but then you'll also have to be unique and different and creative with a different message. Because if you're giving the same message as... It's just like what we found out in the app world, right? So right. there's there's a standard that's already been established, and then this has accelerated substantially to where people are like... like if you if you literally have to click something you know too many times they're done with it I, I'm done I have abandoned this app it's right. not for me so it's like the consumer has all these expectations going into these things and if you don't meet those expectations mm-hmm. you're gonna get uh, lost in the debris mm-hmm. well in, in like the in the app analogy is such a great analogy Justin because in the app world if you come out and let's say you know you create a bad you have a badass idea you're so smart you're so smart you have a great app you have a great idea and it's awesome and you start getting traction and it's got 5000 10000 downloads 100000 people have now downloaded your app you've made $300,000 you're loving life and things are going great and now you're on the radar and now a big fucking company like Activision or some huge company sees that. Reverse engineers re- everything he did. Reverse engineers it, throws fucking a quarter million a month in advertising and just smashes you. Rapes you. Smashes. Just pff, yeah. done. Your business is done. The same thing will happen in this space. Like what makes you think you're going to come in and do the same thing as the other guy is doing and not do it better or not do it with a different message and think you're going to survive. You're going to do it. And even if you do get traction, you get enough traction to where they notice you. Because at first, they'll let you fly on the radar. They don't know who you are. You're not on the radar. Well, they're letting you test ideas to see if they work. Yeah, what they're doing. right. And yeah. then you see it and you go like, oh, wow, oh, cool, that's, that works. that's working. Yeah, and so the we question, have the money. We have the resources. We have the manpower. Boom, let's so throw So then the question yeah. becomes, how does somebody then go in and maintain success? You have to define your why better. Mm-hmm. Well, it's such a great reason too for that exact reason i don't know how many people i've talked to that want to build a business like this what's his name and, simon yeah simon Sinek. Sinek. yeah yeah start with why i want to read his his latest one eaters or leaders eat last i hear it's really good hmm. but start with why is an excellent an excellent have read. your purpose yeah and, and and your your purpose needs to be unique man if you're going to build a business you know then, well if you here's the thing if your purpose is if it's something that you truly feel within you that's really driving you, uh, that gives you purpose, it's not just a purpose like, oh, my purpose is to create you know, a better product for nutrition. Okay, well, that's, that's a purpose, but is that your purpose? Do you feel like that's your purpose? Right. Is it have meaning for you? If it doesn't, it's going to be difficult to weather the storms. It's going to be difficult to pivot when you need to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't even like saying just purpose like that because you know you someone some trainer would respond to you and be like oh I was born to help people and change lives like maybe bro but maybe you weren't born to run a million dollar business maybe you were born to work, work for, for a million dollar business right. sure because there's more to just having a purpose and then no it's, having it's a pur- one but it's an important factor oh hundred percent you're that's, right that's no no point. I'm not yeah. disagreeing but I'm saying yeah. like you you say something like that and the, and I hear this a lot from people. 
that feel so confident that they've, they've been led to or their mission is to help and train people. Therefore, they're going to do they're going to get into this space. Well, getting into this space requires more than you just having a purpose sure. to work within that space. Sure, But I also think that it's it's it needs to be defined a little bit better. That's kind of general. Like, I just want to help people. OK, well, how? Yeah. What do you mean? Help people. How are you specifically going to help people? And how is different than everybody else? That's right. Not only like, what are you going to do different than everybody else that's already doing that and in that, that space? Yes, and that's a basic market, uh, you know, economics lesson. Like, look at the market. Is there a need? Does that can you fill that need? And then is that something that you feel a strong purpose behind? You know, when we started this, our purpose from day one was to change the tide, to 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 change the direction of the massive ship that is the fitness, health, and wellness industry. And there were specific things that we saw within it that we wanted to to tackle, uh, contend with, and that we wanted to bring to light and, and influence. The very first thing we talked about, the very first thing was how the different segments of the fitness, health, and wellness industry did not cross over. Mm-hmm. And we thought that was crazy and silly. We thought it didn't make any sense. Why is it that the wellness people don't jive and talk with and work with the fitness people, and why are there just wellness people and just fitness people? Isn't all of it the same? Is it at all right. contributing to making you healthier? Why do we have spiritual people who aren't even in that conversation? Right. Why, you know, lately why we've is been, it all a conflict of interest? Right. Lately, we've been bringing people on the show that represent different ways of achieving you know, spiritual health or different or opening people's minds or whatever. Why are we doing that? Because it's all part of health. Yeah. We knew that. And so that was the and big- sexual health, right? Yeah, all of it, right? All of, all of it. that represents your your health. And so we talked about that early on. The other thing we talked about was, here, look, here's the bottom line. This is, this is and I'm not trying to be alarmist or whatever. Sometimes I know I come, come across that way, but it is true that not only, we are simultaneously in the most prosperous, amazing time in human history. If you could pick from today going back to the beginning of time, a time when you should be alive, today would definitely be the, the, the time that most people would pick because you have most access to, to things. You don't you know, have to worry about crime. Equality is at all-time highs. Uh, there's you know, opportunities for everybody. If you work hard, you're smart. For the most part, you're going to be okay and do okay. You don't have to worry about starvation. We figured out a lot of acute diseases, all that stuff. But simultaneously, we also have in just dramatic increases in things like depression, anxiety, suicide. Suicide is skyrocketing, mm. especially with in, among uh, young men. Um, you have mental illness uh, skyrocketing. And we knew that the fitness, health, and wellness industry should be the answer. It, that right there is the answer, and yet it's not. It actually was part of the problem, and this was the frustration that we had seen as trainers for I had seen it for at least a decade. I'd worked two decades as a trainer. But at least the second half of my career, I would tell people, forget everything you've yeah, heard. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement because I think the first half we were probably part of the problem. Of course, yeah. of course. But you know, you, because you learn from it, you're in it. You're, you, you, you. This is the information you're receiving as a trainer. You know, from your certifications, from your colleagues, from your education, which is many times funded by these companies, these special interests, whatever. And then you're also clouded by your own ego, your own insecurities. Most people who get into fitness professionally are originally motivated to do so because they, you know, don't like the way their bodies look or the, you know, vanity, whatever. You know, it's it, there's a lot of dysfunction that that kind of propels people initially. So that first half, we were a part of the problem. Hundred percent, I can hundred percent was a part of the problem. The second half, and really what motivated me, and you guys have said the same thing, just your your love for the clients that you have. You want to help them. You really want to help them. So you keep digging, digging, digging. Mm-hmm. And eventually you just get to the point where you're like, okay, you know, Mrs. Smith, I know you're hiring me. Here's the first thing. Forget everything you've heard from the fitness industry. <laughs> Forget everything you've yeah. read and you're, and you're, because all of that stuff, most of it's not going to help you. I'm going to try and help you the way that I know that seems to be successful. And it's very different from what you heard. It's going to take a lot longer than you think, um, but we're going to do this together. And you know, we came from that space coming in. We, we you know we started Mind Pump and we looked and said, hey, we think that this can be the answer. We know the answers are within it. We know the answers are within it from a physical health standpoint, nutritional health standpoint, mental health standpoint, spiritual health standpoint. But it's not getting delivered, yeah. and that's the purpose. And so, you know, it's funny the the money making side of what we do. 
uh, is the side effect of that. And, mm. and I'm, I'm not saying that we started this business without the intent of creating a business. Obviously, we did. But we did a year of business without a single, without a monetization at all. And we worked hard for a full year doing it. And it was, what you know what motivated us every day when we woke up? The purpose. Well, not only that, and you say that because then people think like, oh, that's the, what's one year? Well, the second year wasn't all of a sudden paying the shit out of ourselves no, either. No. You know what I'm saying? We actually got a dollar after the first year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And so, then reinvested quite a substantial yeah, amount. Yeah, even, even at this point, I mean, we're, we're, we're approaching four years, right? I think when's four years hit, Doug? August? Is that when we, or this month? January. Right? Oh, January is going to be four years, right? Yeah, this is four. the first year where I can say we're all like now starting to reap some of the benefits, you know, financially, I would yeah, say. Yeah, right. no, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. Even, even that, it's still conservative considering how large of a company that we've built already mm -hmm. like it's not but again a lot like justin said a lot of that's being reinvested yeah. but back would we would we have lasted as long as we did had we not really felt driven behind this kind of purpose that we're trying to drive to yeah. i don't think so if it was any other business if we did a car wash business or i don't know some any some kind of business <coughs> would we have stuck together as long as we did you know, doing all that, probably not. We would have probably stopped because it wasn't, it wasn't really driving us. And I think that's what's important because in business, if you want to be successful, you, it's almost like you, you, you kind of, that's a big part of it because shit changes. You're going to get thrown down on the floor a lot. And what's going to pick you up is something that's more important than, I don't know, than yourself. Maybe. I, I mean, that sounds a little esoteric, but you get my point. Like there's that purpose behind it. So and it makes a, I think it makes a, a, a huge, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. It really does. And on the other end of it, you know, and here's the business side now, the consumer can see and feel it. I mean, that's oh, the yeah. reality. Yeah. Yeah. You it's know? interesting to think about too, because there's, there was a moment where I, I thought about like the way that I was communicating information to my clients and like, typically it was like, okay, how are we feeling today? Like it was very reactive. You know, and it was very like, um, I'm going to take care of you. We're going to work going forward from here versus like really implanting and, and putting seeds in place to be preventive and like and like figure out what that even looks like mm -hmm. going, you know, in a different direction. And so I feel like a lot of the mentality people share towards their own health is very reactive and they don't they don't want to think in terms of like, you know, what. I can be doing, even though I already feel great right now, what I can be doing to set myself up and invest in myself, you know, in the long term. And, you know, like that's where the wellness side really, you know, needs to be like a conversation that we need to pull that piece into the fitness and Dude, like where you are. Right you know now. what kind of attitude I used to have the first 10 years as a trainer? Client would come to me. I get their goals. You want to lose 30 pounds. You want to feel better, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then my sales pitch was basically, in a nutshell, uh, I would they would trust me because I was very charismatic, right? I could sell my ideas very well. And then I'd say something like, do everything that I'm telling you, follow everything I'm saying, and you'll get exactly what you want. And that was it. Like, just do what I say, and you'll get all the things that you want. And the reason, now, was it successful in the sense that some people did what I said and got the results? Yes. Was it successful in the sense that people actually made lifelong changes? No, it was terribly non-successful, not right, successful right. whatsoever because the message was do what I'm telling right. you. It's like telling a kid all the answers for a test. Yeah. yeah. They'll pass the test. You know what I'm saying? If you tell the kid all the answers to the test, he's going to he's gonna haste the test. It's because I thought- They're not going to value but it. But they're not going to learn it. No, yeah. and it's not because- They're going to learn. It's because we all thought that it was the goal. <clears throat> the goal is the answer. Yeah. Lose 30 pounds, that's which, what we want. Which, you know, talk about how- how challenging that is for trainers even today oh. because you know this this has to be one of the the hardest things and and took me years to get, get get good at this because people come in that way and it's tough because you as a trainer you have to make money you you know and the only way you make money is if people are in front of you and they're hiring you and they're paying you to to stand in front of you well a lot of these people they come in and I know what I want I want this you know I want to lose 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about anything else. Just tell me what to do. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you heard that? How many oh, times has yeah. someone told you that you just, I just, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Just oh, tell yeah. me yep. what to do. Tell me what to eat. Tell me what I have to do. And like, they're just, they're all disgruntled about it. <laughs> right. And, 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 and that's a, that's challenging if you really are going to change their life long term. And then it's also challenging if you're going to be successful and, and, and grow your business. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you said, you need people 
in front of you. So, and, and we are in a service business. And so part of that being in a service business is providing the service that these people are technically paying for. You just have to learn to convince them or make them understand that they don't know, that they're unaware. Mm-hmm. You have to you have to lead them. You, you can't push them. You can't push anybody to these types of changes. You have to lead and they have to willingly follow. That's just the only way it's going to work. Mm-hmm. And the path that you're leading them on starts where they are at. So this is an important thing to understand yep. as a fitness professional. If you're listening and you're a trainer, or even if you're not a trainer and you're trying to change your body, you need to hear this. It's very important. Imagine where you're at and imagine where you think you can be, okay? In order to get to that place, there's a path that you have to follow. And there's only one path. There's no shortcuts. There just isn't. It doesn't work that way. It's proven in studies and science. I'm telling you, based on experience, there absolutely are nor no shortcuts. Can you take a shortcut and get quick results? Yes. Will that be real lifelong change? No. No. Odds are, the big odds are, it's not going to work for you. You're not going to feel any happier, and you'll probably gain the weight back and all that stuff. So there is a clear path, but the path starts where you are at. Now, where are you right now, or where is your client right now? Well, this is somebody that doesn't do any types of structured exercise or activity. This is somebody whose lifestyle is pretty sedentary. They eat in a way that basically the highest value of their food is based on taste or convenience. So those are the two things that determine what they're going to eat. Is it convenient and do I like the taste of it? Okay. So that's, that's where you're, that's what you're dealing with and what you're contending with. And this is also a person that has zero understanding of what is in food. Mm -hmm. They don't know how many grams of protein are in particular types of foods, grams of fat, grams of carbohydrates, how those all affect them. They don't know how to eat based on how they feel on their activity levels. They don't know what their basal metabolic rate, they don't know any of that information whatsoever. They don't know that they have muscle recruitment pattern issues that are maybe potentially causing pain or just making them feel crummy or crappy. They don't know that their sleep uh, may be dysfunctional, is not making them feel better. They don't know that they're relying on stimulants and sedatives to get them up and then get them to sleep. Mm -hmm. They don't know any of these things. Mm -hmm. So where are they at? They are there. That's where the path starts. So how do you take someone from there to this other path, which by the way, there is really no end. The path doesn't end anywhere. Along the way, you get these awesome goals and all that stuff, but you just stay on it. You have to start where you're at. You have to adapt your message to fit within Dude, what they're bringing in. It took me so long to learn yeah. that as a trainer. I mean, it took me a good 10 years. And I was a dedicated, very good trainer for 10 years. And oh. it still took me 10 years to learn that. Where I would get a client and, you know, I would figure out where they were at. And, you know, goal number one was, uh, you know, okay, I want you to drink, you know, two glasses of water a day. Uh. That's where you're at. Where we're at now is two glasses of water a day is where we're going to start. Right. I remember I had one lady who, uh, and I hope she's listening. Her name is Kali. Good good friend of mine. She was sent to me by one of my doctor clients and uh, she, you know, she had some health issues, whatever. She came to me and she had terrible experience with exercise, terrible experience with physical therapy, lots of pain, whatever. First words out of her mouth were, I'm, you know, doctor told me I need to be here and I'm not going to work out more than once a week. That's where she was. Yeah. Huge walls right away. Yeah. Old Sal, Old Sal would have spent an hour convincing her she needed to work out three days a week. Right. Mm-hmm. Convincing her, like, and that's, like, that's going to waste your time. You just come in. New Sal was like, no problem. This is where you're at. Yep. Here's what we could do with once a week. Now, over the course of, I think it was like four years, over the course of four years, she got to the point where she was working out twice a week with me. She was doing activity on her own another two or three days a week. So now she became mostly active versus where she was doing before. Her diet radically changed. When she first came to me, it was like, it was all, what, here's what she knew about diet. Uh, if I eat low calorie, I'll be okay. That was her thing. It was a lot of processed food, stuff like that. And then she used to tell me, don't talk to me about nutrition. Actually told me that for two years. Yeah. Do not talk to me about nutrition. So I'm like, no problem. And I knew some of her inflammation issues and all that stuff was tied to the sugar and the processed food, but I didn't even touch it because she wasn't there yet. You know, four years later, she was making her own meal. I mean, complete transformation. Right. I would have blown her out of the water. Yeah. old sal i would have oh. never never touched yeah her. you know the other thing i mean you bring up like i just i recognized about how i would start to coach and communicate like uh, before that i would give them like like you said like the the answers to all the tests right like yeah. here's what to look out for here's this this that the other but really what was even more effective was sort of giving them a very 
you know, a more of a broad stroke of like things to consider, but step back and step back and then, and then probe them later, ask questions that, you know, obviously you're leading them into certain answers, but you know, even for them to have self-discovery and to figure these things out on their own Mm -hmm. was way more powerful. Oh, they come in. Oh my God. I feel like when I ate this food, uh, it, I totally felt different the next day. I had all this energy, uh, yep. you know, like them understanding that about themselves, like that lasted long. You know time. why? Whatever you say to someone else, they can then decide is true or false. That's always true. This is a, by the way, this is a sales lesson as well. If you try to communicate effectively, this is an important thing to understand. Whatever statement you make is either true or false to the person that's listening. Whatever statement they make is always true to them. Mm-hmm. So if a client figures something out for themselves, or at least they feel like it's something that they've discovered on their own, it's impactful and it is true. You can hammer it all you want into the <laughs> tell them, yeah, but dude. they can decide it's bullshit and nah, I don't right, believe right. that. I saw it, I felt it. Yeah, and it's it's just not going to work. And this is you know this is the direction. And th- here's the thing: I, I know why the, the fitness industry never didn't go has never gone in this direction. It doesn't sell a lot of shit and it's not sexy. <laughs> yeah. And how do I sell a supplement? Based on that, you know, what is that? Right. You know, take, you know, here's your, your long-term fitness plan supplement. It makes you think about what you're doing. I, don't, I mean, I don't understand. What, do we know marketing behind it? It's very difficult. Right. So I get that. And, but I'm glad that new technology allows this message to get out because even our message wouldn't be able to get out, would, wouldn't have gotten out before. Well, speaking of tech, this is why I, I'm so big on, because the first half of my career, we didn't have the tools that we have now. And what I love to do, you know, I just had a client recently, a friend of mine who I still talk to and help. And she's like, Adam, I got this. She's got a vacation coming up in about a month and a half or so. And she's like, I I just want to come down like five pounds. Can you tell me what to do? And I said, well, you know the process with me. What's the first thing I want to want you to do? Like, I have no idea where you're at right now. I have no idea what you've been doing. Like, give me a week. Track everything. Show me your steps. Track your food. Don't change anything. Do what you've been doing. That's I just want to see where you're at. Because from there... I'll give one to two small goals. I'll look at where her movement is and her steps are on a regular basis. I'll look at what she's eating and I'll see what's going on with her exercise and give very subtle things. And then I'm not going to give her subtle things and say, oh, this, that, expect all these things. I'll say, do that, report back. And then I want to hear, what do you feel? What do you notice? What's going on? So they can make that connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is so important. Those awareness tools are very, yes, can be used very, very powerful. Very, very important to make it otherwise they will forever lean on me to always tell them, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. what to do. This way, it's like, okay, she'll start to pick up on it to the third, the fourth, the fifth time that I told her this every time that, hey, track your stuff, see where you're at. Now let's make some subtle adjustments, you know? And a lot of times, and this happens almost every time, when somebody, I tell someone to do that, just the tracking and becoming aware automatically makes a big difference because everybody thinks they're moving more than what they really are and everybody thinks they're eating better than what they really are, including myself, who's been tracking and doing this for fucking 20 years. Isn't that funny? We tend to overestimate all that stuff. Yes. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. And start tracking like, oh, some healthy stuff. Even myself. (laughs) Even myself. Here's the thing. Even when I, I, you know, quote unquote, eating well, you know, and and I track it, there's always something I can tweak to actually improve it. And it's subtle, whether it be increasing my fiber or increasing my protein or reducing my sugar or whatever, or better, more healthy fats. Like there's always something in my diet that isn't perfectly balanced always that will only make my body run more optimally if I start to fuel mm-hmm. it correctly. Mm-hmm. And I can just make that one. Little, and it's not a huge commitment. It's not weigh a bunch of food, measure a bunch of stuff, sacrifice everything, eat bars and shakes every day. It's like, oh, look, you know, it looks like I'm grossly under eating fiber. That's going to help. You know, that's going to help big time. If I said, oh, shit, look at that. I'm getting like 70 to 90 grams of sugar every day. Had no idea. And And the cool thing is the more you the more you do that with the right intentions, the easier it becomes to live that way without having to right to make those just because then you start to know like oh I know that I've been I haven't got my usual intake of berries you can feel it yeah you can feel like oh I know why I feel this way why my digestion is this way you know I've done this now five times why my stool is off like it's so weird I had such a bad shit today (laughs) whoa maybe go backtrack the last forty eight hours God how many people don't (laughs) how many people don't realize bad shits are not normal right so many people (laughs) they don't attribute it yeah it's just like oh I had <laughs> crazy explosive diarrhea again this morning. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Dude, I used to I thought we just pooped inconsistently. 
myself. That was just the Seriously. way it was. Yes, yeah. I just thought you have good shit days, bad shit days. I mean, it's even people joke about it, right? Like, yeah. oh, I had a great shit today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know like, wait Ooh, a that second. That one burned. Why yeah. isn't it like that <laughs> Damn it. every day? Like, it yeah. should be that way. Or, like, it shouldn't or, be like... Or accepting that, you know, like here's one, especially from the muscle building community, that when you fart, it needs to be terribly putrid. Yeah, yeah. Like you need like to that's clear a, the whole like weight room. Yeah, or no, that's just farts. Farts are supposed to be. Or they're not like, supposed no, to be like. Or it's dude. normal that you're farting all day long, or you take five shits because of it. Yeah, like, no, that, that's yeah. not normal either. Dude. No, no, no. I used to. I used to actually use it as <laughs> it's a gauge. crazy. Our body, our body gives us so many signs, dude. We just don't. We ignore them. Yeah. yeah, we completely ignore them. Now that's the irony of it all. Is as you start to read these things and track these things and pay attention to these things, and simultaneously make the highest value when it comes to your nutrition, your health, like that becomes the, 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 the primary value of your, of what drives you to eat. But you also have to have all that information behind it. You have to know what to do when you do that. I, you know, I hate saying this because people take this the wrong way, but in it, cause it is a process, but once you do that, you have the right information. You've been working with your body. You start to understand how to read things and simultaneously health is the ultimate priority it gets easy. It Dude, actually becomes easy. Think about the most ideal situation ever. If you know somebody is that open-minded, willing to go through that process of like eating, paying attention, writing, tracking, simultaneously go through the process of understanding, you know, where their joint uh, is where it lies, where their their abilities lie currently, and what patterns they you know have established as routine for them every single day. Like if they know, if they get to the point where they know a, a pretty solid amount of of data, where they can they can assess like here's where I'm currently. Like this is my homeostasis. This is like literally where I am. Think about going forward from there. How easy that is. Like people well, want to bypass that whole process completely and just get to the grind and the work. Oh yeah, because and here's the other wonderful thing I love about fitness. Once you you understand its power, you can have a lot of fun with it. You know, hey, I want to get a little leaner. You can get a little leaner. Hey, I want to get shredded. You can get shredded. I want to get really strong. I want to get really mobile. Uh, I need more energy for this. Oh my God, this is a stressful time in my life. I need to make my body more resilient to stress. Knowing how your body works and, and, and making health the priority, you can move the branches coming off of that are very good. They're very accurate. You know, yeah. I've always said I've said this to several people now in my in my uh, my DMs where they're either physique competitors or, or bodybuilders or bikini competitors, and they'll tell me, "Hey, you know, I, I am I make I'm trying to make health my ultimate priority. I'm trying to do all these things, but also I like to compete and get shredded, and I know it's not healthy and this that and the other." And what I tell them is that that's perfectly fine, but make health your home base, move from there versus people don't have a home base. So it's either shredded or pff, yeah. terrible yeah. health. Shit in between. Wait, right, right. So once you make that your, your, your base, your home base, and you know where to move from there, it becomes a lot of fun. And, it, and, and dare I say again, easy. It yeah. becomes easier. You don't have to work as hard. Like it's like tightening a screw in a Dude. very like laser focused uh, direction versus like having to do a bunch, in, you know, in competition with but you, each other. You got to learn to enjoy the process too, because it's ne of it's never going to end. I mean, I I bet you right now, no, if we went yeah. around the room, okay, I guarantee there's things right now because we're all on the six week challenge right now. There's things that I don't want to say learning because all of us, I think, have learned a lot of lessons already, but are becoming aware of where you're currently at mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Like, are, you know, not eating enough of this, doing too much of this, posture like this, pain like this. Like, I, a couple things right off the bat for me. Like, right now, you know, because I'm back to tracking again, uh, it always reminds me of what a challenge it is for me to hit protein intake. Mm -hmm. It just, it flat out is. I'm a big guy, I need a lot of protein. And it's just, and I like meat. I still, but it's just uh, for me to hit the right amount for my my size. Are you going two hundred? That's where I want to be. But it's yeah, that's that's four fifty gram servings. Yeah, which is pretty big. Yeah, you know that's a that's a lot. Like yesterday, I, yesterday I had three meals, and one of them had thirty grams in it. One had forty grams in it. One had twenty. Yeah, not enough. That's yeah. yeah. Think about that right there. That's way low. I mean, it's enough for health, but not for your yeah, right. Like yeah, I'm yeah. trying to make gains right now. I'm yeah. trying to. We're trying to. I'm trying to win a competition, so I ain't fucking around. I'm trying to make moves. Which a lot of people they're trying to make moves. You know, sure, most sure, people yeah. are trying to change their body composition. We do have a a percentage, a sliver of people that listen to this show that just want optimal health. They sure, want to sure, feel good. Sure. And we talk a lot to that. But 
there's a bigger bulk of people that want to change their bodies and they want to move it. And there's always things every time I come back to, you know, competing or challenging myself to move my body composition that I'm underperforming or not doing so well. Then let's talk about posture. So we d- I drove from we drove up from Santa Barbara, right? And I, I right after that I did chest. And man, my shoulder was killing me. Oh, it's from sitting in the car all day. Exactly. You were priming the wrong way. Right. Without even realizing. For it. Yeah. two five hour trips in the car, mm-hmm. you know, and then sitting also while we're we're down there the whole time pretty much. So, you know, uh, duh, I know why my shoulder hurt mm-hmm. when I went to go do chest. And then I went to go do our zone one against the wall. And, oh, I could feel it. Like, I can tell, I can barely get my hands back against the wall with my head and my low back pressed flat. Like, that's the zone one just crushes This me. is from MAPS Prime. Right. So mm-hmm. it just crushes me to just get into that position. It's always an area for me. And it's always an area that everything I do is working against that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like instantly, and this is, again, it's not a learning thing for me. I'm aware, I'm, I know this. But right away, when I feel that, because I've been here enough times, mm-hmm. I know to go over, go do my zone test. And then it's just, to me, it's like, oh, wow, holy crap. I'm, I'm like six inches away from the wall right now, where normally I can get all the way against the wall or close to the wall, which just reminds me of like how important mm-hmm. that is to not only consistently do that, but then to also do that for sure to combat it when I have a day like yeah. that where I'm sitting in a really poor position. So these are just things that... I, to this day, I've been training for a very long time. I'm still being reminded and still becoming more hyper aware of these little nuances of how my body works and how I need to feed it nutritionally to see the change. Yep, yep. It, not, setting a specific date for a particular goal, if you're in a good uh, starting place or if you're healthy, you understand. You know, you, you, you're working for things in the in the right way. What a great way to pick up on those nuances, to pick up on those small details because now you're focused on something and it's not just this general thing. Mm-hmm. Otherwise it becomes much more much more difficult. Like for me, I notice for myself, even if I make good food choices, eating out is not nearly as good as preparing my own food. Period. End of story. Done. Now part of that is because I, I, I do have a, a sensitive gut, so that kind of changes. But I also notice it in my body. Even if I eat out and make the right choices Whatever oils they use or the quality of food, I can tell. And the reason why I can tell now is because I'm not eating out at all or very little now. I'm eating out very, very, whereas before I would eat out almost every day. I'd make good choices, but I'd still buy food out. Even at Whole Foods, it's funny. You go to Whole Foods, which is supposed to be this healthy place. Mm -hmm. They use vegetable oil and all their shit. Everything is canola oil. Uh Everything is canola oil and and, and, and all these, these processed vegetable oils, which are inflammatory. Now, for a person like me who's got... You know, you know, who's had gut issues in the past, really bad ones. That inflammatory oil, even though it's not gluten or dairy or things that I typically have an intolerance to, they will affect me. Yeah. And the way I'll feel it is inflammation. I'll feel it in my joints. I'll feel how I move. So that's interesting because I've noticed too. I'm obviously I'm I'm sticking to one thing with meat, but like you can you can definitely tell the difference in quality. Yes. Um. And like with Butcher Box, it's nice because it's all consistent and it's you know I know it's like high grade quality and it's something that I can lean on at my house and cook for myself. I put it on the grill. Like I know the process. Like I'm not adding anything to it that uh, like you said oils or any any anything, any sort of like spice or anything else might have some gluten or anything else involved with it but um going out to eat was like there'd just be that little bit of flavor they'd add or maybe they added some kind of like saline solution to the meat or something maybe it's a low-grade meat like i it was very like uh, obvious like especially with my digestive process with that too and then the next morning i would have like diarrhea sometimes when i'd eat out well, i shared this with you guys when i was competing way back when when we were doing the show like I remember I did one show where, and I mean, I followed my macros to a T, both shows. The only difference was one show, I let myself have the processed foods. I let myself have bars and shakes, and I had a lot of them. Yeah, macros are the same. Everything's yeah, the same. Everything's the same. Apparently. Then, right, right. Exactly. And then the other the other way was all whole natural foods that I weighed, measured myself. And, and there was a very, and even though both shows, I came in shredded, I looked good, I got on stage. There was a distinct difference that I could tell in my body. It just looked different, you know. And if, you know, it looked softer. It looked like I was holding more water. I was probably inflamed a little bit, you know. I whatever it was, it was not exactly the same. It was not equal. I can tell you that right now. And so, it's what's cool is when you do things like that, where you, like you said, Sal, where you set a a challenge or a competition where 
you're you're actually tra- tracking or measuring or you're trying to make progress consistently, it, you become hyper aware of sure. all of these these little. And the leaner you get, that's one of the main benefits of getting really lean. And I recommend anybody who's at a good place with their health and fitness and nutrition, I recommend those people in that in that space. One time, try and get yourself to a, a nice, really lean body so, fat percentage. How about this? Just the leanest you've ever been. Yeah, Wherever you don't even have to get shredded, right? Just right. Because maybe you've never, never seen below ten percent, and nine, nine yeah. percent is not just because your body is very sensitive and, to things. And, and I will guarantee you, guarantee you, yeah. you will feel things you've never felt before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But your body is extremely sensitive, and what it takes to get that lean is crazy. What I mean, I remember, and I remember that very, very vividly. As I got lower and lower and lower, how ultra sensitive I became to every little thing that put into my body. I mean, I remember having a sip of coffee and like feeling it go through my body, yeah. like seeing it go through my, like yeah. literally seeing my veins all of a sudden start to pop out and see, feeling it come. It's a trip yep. when you're that, that lean. You have like no body Yeah, fat you on. become really, but you have to be a healthy person and have a good grasp of right, things right. go there. But when you do... If you're smart, you can really pay attention. You know, it was mind blowing for me, and this was uh, Jessica pointed this out to me a long time ago, and I and and I pointed this out to you, Justin, when we were eating out. When you go to a restaurant and you order food, and they give you that little you know plastic cup of butter. Oh yeah, it's never real butter, mm. ever. I did not know that. So we were eating out, and I was eating. I don't remember where we were eating. Oh, we were, that vegetable. I think oil we're at the fish shit. market or something, and we got fish and vegetables and whatever. And I said, hey, can I have a side of butter to put on my vegetables? And so she brings it out and puts it in front of me. And Jessica goes, wait, hold on. She goes, is this real butter? And the lady goes, oh, uh, hold on. And then she goes in the back, comes back with real butter, which is harder and more solid. Mm -hmm. This was vegetable oil margarine. fluffy and kind of. It's margarine. Now, it tastes like butter because they flavor it. Right. But you want to talk about something that's just absolutely, like nobody disagrees that that's bad for your body. Even, you know, traditional like FDA, whatever, will say, you know, those trans fats are bad for you. They're terrible. And when you eat them, you may be eating everything right put and not realize that that's what they're using to give your food flavor mm-hmm. and then be like, why do I feel like shit? Yeah. I didn't eat the foods I'm intolerant to. I ate mostly healthy. It's because you had a bunch of vegetable oil, processed vegetable. And they, I remember I told you that the same yeah. thing when, you, when, when they brought it to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was a substantial difference because you could see how they like whip it and it's all fluffy. And it's like it, they, they got it down to where it looks really a appetizing appealing and like it you know <laughs> yeah. but it's not even real dude that's dude, when i was a kid that's what i used yeah i used that all, country crock remember yeah. that i do remember in the brown dude. tub that, that was our yep. our family the big old tub they used, to, yeah. they used to sit on the the dinner table every night with all of our bread and stuff that we used to eat yeah and just put it all over everything. wonder bread and shit. yeah and just and just <laughs> oh terrible. that was marketed as way healthier than butter forever like uh, the the I can't believe it's not butter thing that was going on. For, what are you uh, What are you guys community. What are you guys becoming aware of right now? Like currently, because we're all in what week we're into week two right now, right? Is yeah, we're, we're into mm-hmm. week two right now doing this whole thing. Are there things that you're becoming hyper aware of that you maybe you weren't doing before that you notice that you're you're changing? I or? so what I've done so far is I've definitely brought generally brought my calories down, um, but I've also I, I don't want to lose too fast because I've dropped I've dropped three about three pounds, which is a little bit more than I wanted to, although I know maybe one of those is is, is water, so I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. So what I did was, is you know, I'm incorporating fasting uh, into my regime. And what I'm doing is on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays when I don't have heavy workouts, I'll fast until about 2 or 3 p.m. And those will be my lower calorie days, and the rest of the days are, are higher. But I think they were too low calorie because I had initially dropped about 4 pounds. So And my appetite was ravenous, and I was like, okay, I need to slow this down because I have five more weeks. And what I don't want to do is, is you know, head into the the last week where I'm just depleted and losing muscle and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. so I've bumped them up a little bit. But the biggest thing I notice is just eating out. Even if I make the right food choices, it's not the same. So I'm just really not eating out that much, which is great for my pocketbook too. Yeah. Because I tell you what, I added up how much money I spend eating out. Oh, especially the way we eat. Dude, I could buy. I could buy a double cool, double meat, and I could buy yeah. a nice car right now for that for for, oh, you know, I know. for that it's monthly been expensive payment. Expensive buying all these steaks. Oh, let me tell you. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, like what I've noticed really is just like my activity levels have dramatically increased, um, and my joint pain is pretty much non-existent. So really, yeah. So when, even when I'm doing like any deadlifting or like back, you know, back squats or anything like that, like I don't feel. Sometimes I'll get a little twinge in my knee or, you know, I'll get like a little bit of a shoulder pain. 
um, you know, when I'm lifting heavy, I just don't feel that right. Now. I feel like really like supercharged. So, um, and, and fluid in my joints. So I don't even really spend a whole lot of time with mobility right now. I, I, you don't I, have to. Yeah. It's weird. Like I, I feel like somewhat athletic, you know, like with my movements, like I'm, I'm a lot, um, and it, I think it's just that the, the weight loss element of it has definitely played a factor in that. And, um, I think my body does well, you know, at a, at a lighter weight. As you said far you were seven pounds down. Seven pounds down. So you're seven. I'm down about three. Adam, you said you stayed the same. Well, I'm down now. So I was the last time you asked me that I was the same. So which was just a few days ago. But I just recently dry went three days in a row of low low calorie. And what do you? How much have you gone down? Uh, I dropped five pounds right away. Holy cow! Well, yeah. it's water. Yeah, yeah. Most, water. most of it's water. I think you were getting leaner anyway. I was because you were looking different. And I won't. And I won't stay down here. I'll, today, today will be. I, the plan is to train today and then do a nice refeed. And then I'll be back up on my calories again. But like every like, so I think I originally told everybody I was going to do a um, a two week cut, a two week bulk, a two week cut, and what it's kind of played out to be. And then I t- I talked about that I more than likely call an audible, and I for sure have called an audible. And that's just because, and I won't like I you brought up fasting, like I won't be doing any fasting, um, and mainly for me, like I, I see that my metabolism still is nowhere near where it was before. And I'm trying to get it there, you know. So I'm not I'm not interested in going too low of calorie. I'm not interested. Yeah, you don't want those med- you don't want it to adapt down. Yeah, I don't I don't want it to adapt any lower than what it is. I can tell it's not very responsive. In the past, like if I were to do like I just did where I did like these back to back low days of calories, man, I would just see myself really lean out and my body's just not very re- as too res- soon. Yeah, it's just not as re- exactly. Like in a perfect world, I mean, I was just getting back to feeling good. I should be for the next 6 months really kind of in the building phase, maybe not six, maybe three months, whatever, you know, I, for, but for a while I should be in this more of a building phase, which I've been doing because we're trying to get lean and build. That's where I'm kind of in this gray area of, you know, changing my body composition for me. I hope when I get this test, I care uh, even less about like how exactly how much body fat I have. I hope I put some muscle on. So mm. if I can lose a few pounds of fat and then also put some muscle on along the way, that's a big win for me mm. versus just trying to get shredded and lean, bo- lose body fat because I know my body, if I do that, I'll in, it, it's inevitable I'll sacrifice some muscle in, in order just to do sure, that. You know, sure, so. sure. One, one thing like uh, as far as the eating schedule for me goes that I've realized is that uh, like I'm actually trying to apply more like high calorie like focused days like almost like the inverse of like the fasting mentality so what i where i am is already low calorie like i can't like it's it's a pretty low so you're trying to do days of high calorie. so i'm trying to do days of high calorie that i'm intermittently interjecting throughout the week so maybe two a week where i'm just like really focused on like loading as much as possible that's smart and so that's that's been something new that i've done that i felt like it's good because then it'll carry me into the next day and i feel this like uh lift of energy that's smart did i tell you guys what i'm doing this weekend Mm-mm. So I'm running a little bit, little experiment, and I'm going to document it um, and share it on social media on my on my Instagram page. This is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I've never taken the time out uh, aside to do. And and now that I have a home gym in my garage, and this weekend, you know, I don't have the kids, so it's just going to be Jessica and I, and we have nothing else scheduled on Saturday. And so I thought this is the perfect time. So what I'm going to do. Is and this is an experiment on. I want to see how uh, my central nervous system responds and reacts to a full day of. Uh, oh, the training you're going to split this like weekend. Nice. A full a full day of resistance training. Like seven. You say you're going to break it up in like seven workouts. Or so something? what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm pick three exercises, and so is Jessica. My three exercises, and I, I've been weighing it out. Like what movements. Should I do? Because mm-hmm. I only want to do three because, and you'll know why in a second, uh, I, I don't want to pick any more. So I only had to pick three, and I wanted them to be the same throughout the whole day. I didn't want to do three different exercises each time because the, the idea of this is, and what I think is going to happen is throughout the day, my CNS or my body is going to actually feel stronger because I'm getting better at the movement as I'm doing the movements. My intensity is going to be moderate. I'm not trying to do high intensity. How many sets are you going to do? So I'm going to pick three exercises, three sets each, and I'm going to do this workout uh, every other hour starting at 7 a.m. 
So I'm going to go 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m., go all the way down to 7 p.m. So I'm going to be doing- yeah. You know how many total sets that is? Six, so it's six <laughs> workouts. That's a volume. It's, I think, six workouts. Uh, Times nine, that's 54 sets. Actually, no, seven workouts. It's gonna be, we're going to do another one. So it's seven workouts. Uh, and so, so 21 sets per exercise for the whole day. Now the intensity is going to be moderate. Oh, how is that's not? Oh yeah, per exercise. Yeah, per so exercise. Yeah, so, so it's actually going to be sixty three. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be. Uh, uh, I'm picking three exercises. The ones I'm picking are uh, bench press, barbell squat, and barbell row. I was going to do deadlift, mm -hmm. but I thought deadlifting and squatting that much. That's very taxing. Yeah, I'm going to fuck myself up. Yeah. So I'm that doing. Good, that was a good call. Yeah. yeah so I'm going bench, uh, squat, barbell row. I'm picking a weight that I can normally do, maybe like eight or ten reps with, and I'm only doing five. So it's Still heavy. It's still going to feel kind of challenging, but it's not. I'm not challenging myself, but I'm doing it throughout the entire day, every other hour. Wow. In between. Damn, you're going to do this Saturday? This Saturday. When you're going to start, what time? 7 a.m. I kind of want to do this. Yeah. In between know. the workouts, I'm going to feed myself a little bit. So I'm going to have small meals of proteins, carbohydrates, and some fats. And the reason why I'm doing that, obviously, is I'm going to be doing so much exercise, so I have to, have to fuel myself. I'm also in between the workouts, and this I'm taking out of a, of a uh, out of the Paul Check book. In between, I'm going to be writing uh, for Mind Pump. So this is why I said I'm going to be creating oh, some guides. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy day right yeah, here. Yeah, and, and you right know, left brain action. Huh? Yeah, Paul Check says you know he he's always saying paint or write in between your sets of exercise because you're you know you're you're, you're switching the the focus from this kind of logical forward thinking type of thing when you're working out aggressive to this calm, parasympathetic, creative mind. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, that's fascinating. And now here's the other reason why I'm doing it, and this is my theory. My theory is, well, first off, my big, the big challenges with doing this workout are, can I keep my body from just breaking down and overdoing it? Because that's a lot. That's a, by the fourth or fifth you know, yeah, time doing it. What does it, your eating look like with this? So it's going to be small. So I'm going to have like uh, white rice, chicken, or some red meat. I'll throw in some fat in there, maybe some fruit. So just light, but to fuel my body. And I'm also going to map it out so the calories all... And then at the end of the day, I'm going to have a big meal. Um, but I also want to do the, the the writing and creative stuff in between because I'm going to go from sympathetic and I also want to do parasympathetic in between. I don't want... Um, I don't want to be so amped all day long that it's going to... It'll mess me up. It'll be too much. Well, yeah. you know that... Yeah, that's like what... what basically separates a lot of professional level athletes versus like amateur level athletes is how quickly you can get into parasympathetic. Yeah. So how quickly you can recover. Yep. I'm aware. So, so that's going to be that caffeine how, say, I'll use in the beginning of the day and then I'm not doing any more caffeine throughout the whole day because I don't want to hammer myself. Are minute. you going to, so take the three movements. You're only doing five reps. Uh, are you going to circuit the three or are you going to give yourself adequate rest? Between? No straight sets. So straight sets. yep. Okay. Same weight. So here's the challenge is going to be picking the right weight. Am I going to pick the right weight at the beginning of this? So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to pick the perfect weight. And the goal is a weight that's challenging enough to where I feel like I have to focus, but not so hard to where I'm like, like going through a hard workout. Well, why don't and, you give yourself a, a more, a more flexibility on your rep range, like shoot for a five to eight rep range. And as long as you fall in there, I have a feeling that the higher rep ranges are going to burn me out. And that the five, I was going to do two or three. And then I thought, no, you know, let's go a little higher. But if I go too high, because you know how high reps can really burn you out if you just keep doing it over and over again. Yeah. So I'm doing five. I want to stick with five. I want to pick a weight that I can do for five. Here's what I think is going to happen. I feel like the first couple workouts are going to feel the same. By the third and fourth one, I think I'm going to feel stronger. I think I'm actually going to feel like I'm driving and getting into the weight and feeling good. By the fifth, sixth, and seventh, I feel like I'm going to start to fade and start to kind of hurt a little bit. Yeah. End of the day, we're going to do yoga, stretching, uh, mobility type work, uh, Dude, have a big meal. Are you doing it at home or are you going to do it here? At home. Okay. Yeah, it's in my garage because I have food there and everything. I would love to have one of the boys go over and video. I know you're going to document it on your Instagram, but that's a really cool idea. Yeah, we're just going to talk and see, you know, I just, let people I just, know what's going on. I just really li I like that idea. Yeah, and I'll give every and then Sunday, because the day after that, I don't know how my body's going to feel. I could be sore as shit and feel terrible. I could be like, "Ooh, this feels great." I have no idea. So Sunday, what we plan you're is gonna be, a, you're going to be sore as shit. I did. I'll never, I feel like it. I, I will never be. forget. I had this. I'll never forget this workout. Um, it was with a, my best friend and another buddy, and it's it's like the only. It's so weird. It's the only time this has ever happened, and we were just. I don't know why this happened, but we were in the gym for like four hours. 
And, you know, because we most of it was talking and bullshitting. But we were lifting together. We are all lifting together. And we'd do a set, and then we'd bullshit for a while. Then we'd do another set and bullshit for a while. And it literally stretched out over four hours. And I remember at that time, I was really serious about my lifting. And so we, when we did get in and lift, I was definitely pushing myself a little bit weight-wise and so because I wanted a good workout. But I remember leaving the gym and not feeling like I got a great workout. I didn't have this massive pump. I didn't feel like I lifted like crazy. And I was a little pissed off but I was sore as fuck mm -hmm. the next day. It just surprised the shit out of me because I never felt like I worked that hard. That's, see, that's what so, I think is going to happen. So I think that is going to happen to you that's too. That's what I think is going to happen. So the day after, we're, we may go to Refuge and do sauna, oh, steam, wow. cold dip. Damn, you guys get this all planned out. Relax. I'm a little jealous right now. This is something I've been planning for a long time and wanting to do. Because I have a theory, and my theory is that if you do something like this and you do it right, that you should see... Very rapid strength uh, and muscle gains. I, I, that, it's one of my theories. One of my th because it's it's like taking trigger sessions to the extreme yeah, or that concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. With so you. I feel like it may do that. So today I'm taking off. I'm not lifting today. I'm just doing regular trigger sessions. Supposed to do a heavy workout today, but I'm not to prepare for tomorrow. So I don't know, man. We'll we'll see what happens. You know, wow. we'll, we'll I'm, exci I'm excited for yeah, you. Yeah. So yeah, but I'm basically gonna be home all day long. Well, I know that to me is probably what because I'm thinking about it right now. Like part of me is like, fuck, can I do this tomorrow? Is it's a commitment. Dude. Yeah, my whole day is ruined. I mean, yeah. you're not doing anything else that day, bro. I mean, if you're really gonna schedule, because just the the training part, you can just carve out that 30 to 45 minutes right there. So that's that first hour, and then you have an hour break, and then you're gonna go again. Well, in that hour break, you're talking about working and eating. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna be eating for a little bit. So probably the last half hour of the working out is getting ready to eat. You eat, and then you're gonna be you're gonna be reading, and then or I mean writing. Yep. And then you're going to be right back. I mean, you are going to be all day, all day yeah. long. I feel like what's going to happen is the first workout, I'm going to have to warm up, stretch, whatever. I feel like after that, I'll just be able to jump in. Now, I have, it. you know, I, th I don't think it'll take longer than 15 I do minutes. have a suggestion. You'll be pretty I mean, you yeah. can do whatever the fuck you want, but I do have a suggestion that I think that you should do instead of dedicating every hour in between to riding is maybe every other one of those, you actually go for a stroll. Otherwise, you're actually not going to move very much. Hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. You're gonna because the lifting you'll be yeah. moving a little bit for the you lifting. You might not recover. Yeah, mm -hmm. you might. It might be. We'll see. That's a very good point. Might, and, yeah, that's and, a good point. And also, about. it'll speed up the digestive. So, what I would suggest, if I was doing, if I was gonna do the same thing well, as you I, are, I plan on writing a, a guide, and I think I'll be able to do that within. You know, if I'm focused or whatever, I definitely think I'm gonna be focused because there's nothing like movement to make my mind like. I think I'll probably be able to. I'll be done with it. Not even halfway through. And then, but I think what you're saying is is very valid. I didn't even right, think of that. Right. Yeah. I think a, I think a, a sweet setup for that. I know I'm totally taking your idea and fucking piggybacking off of it. But I think that like doing what you're doing, I would after I do the sets, I would I would eat and then I go for a 20 minute stroll, just walk to help speed the digestive sure, process up. Sure. That's only going to help get the nutrients where it needs to go and then get you ready for the next lift within an hour and a half, which is perfect because that's about how long it's going to take for that food to digest. So you're only going to speed that process mm -hmm. up for you. So I think it'll help digestion. I think it'll promote better movement because you're actually moving, getting blood flow to circulation, and then calories burn. I, I, that's what. I, that's the only thing that's different. Other than that, it'll be interesting. I'm excited though. This is cool. Yeah, we'll yeah. see what, what happens. A cool, what a cool idea. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's when did a, you come, When did you think of that? I I told you guys this a long time ago, like yeah. maybe maybe two years ago. I remember this, even talking about. It, so yeah, wow. Yeah, and well, I really, know. Yeah, I know. We did kind of mention that. You mentioned this before. Yeah. I, I really. But what made you decide you're gonna do this right well, now? Well, evolved. It evolved from. So I read a bunch of old. Uh, you know, I'm always reading old stuff on when it comes to fitness and bodybuilding and muscle building and all that stuff. And there's this old technique that lifters used to do back in the day that wasn't super popular, but it was popular enough to where it was written about where you'd go in the gym and you, every hour you'd go in the gym and work your arms and you'd work them, get a good pump and then, you know, take a break. And then the next hour or the following or two hours later, do it again. You do this all day long. And guys would say that they'd add a half an inch to their arms in a single day. And I've read articles on this. I remember reading them as a kid and thinking they were crazy and that's stupid. And maybe they're just so swollen and inflamed that that's what's happening. Then I started, you know, doing research online and guys were saying like, no, nah, man, I actually did this and gained like a quarter inch of my arms or, and then I understood how trigger sessions work and how the sensor nervous system works. And, and I thought this would be fascinating. I wonder if I could kind of apply this to myself in a, in a, you know, in a, in a calculated way. And so I just came up with this idea and I don't know how this is going to work. I may halfway through this, realize that this is destroying my body and I have to completely scale back 
to maybe, you know, one set of each extras. I have no idea what this is going to be like, but this is, I'm going into it with that idea, but I'll still listen to my body. I'm not going to force myself through uh, it. I'm, I'm excited. Grand experiment. I'm excited because yeah. I've never done anything to that extreme. And the closest experiences that I've had, I've seen positive things too. Yeah. The time that I told you about with my buddies that time. And then another time I had a whole week where I, and I was in the middle of like, I wasn't competing. This was before competing days, but I was in the middle of like this structured, I'm going to get shredded plan. And I was getting lean and I had, I took a, I took a vacation. And for the first time ever in my twenties that I had taken a week off and not left, it was like, it was all about fitness. And so I would go to the gym, I'd lift, I'd come back home, I'd eat, rest a little bit, go back. I would do that like three times a day, every single day for the entire week. I saw some of the most gains yeah. I've ever seen, and I felt amazing because what I was—I was literally just thinking like, "What would be optimal right now?" Okay, I'm going to go stretch for a little bit now. I had all the time in the world to go in and out of the gym, nothing to do for an entire week, and I was—I was in, but I was only in it like two or three times every day. But still, that was more than I'd ever done before, and I was feeding properly still and doing a lot of yeah. other things besides. It wasn't just like hammering because that's the mistake I think some people think is, "Okay, well, let's look at the total volume we're doing." And let's do this, you know. Dude, I've never in my life done 21 sets of squats, you know, you know what I mean, in a day, or 21 sets of rows yeah, or bench press, you know, or 63 total sets in a workout. Like I can't wait to hear Yeah, that so I don't know what it's going to be like, but we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, check this out. We have a bunch of free guides at mindpumpfree.com. They're absolutely free. Some of them talk about how to train your legs. Some of them talk about how to get your midsection to get flat. Uh, we have a back pain guide, so if your back hurts and you're trying to figure out what's going on, we have a guide for that. They're all free, all absolutely free at mindpumpfree.com. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, um, and, and you can follow me on Instagram for some of the stuff I'm doing over the weekend. This should still be there on Sunday. I'm doing this on Saturday. Um, our Instagram handles are, you can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Justin at Mind Pump Justin, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.